In this video, we'll be looking at short division. In order to be able to do this successfully, it's important that you have a good understanding of place value and that you know your times tables well. It is also very important that you remember how to set up your calculation. If we look at the first example, 96 divided by 3, we can see that the number we are dividing is on the left hand side. This is known as the dividend. The number we are dividing by is on the right hand side. This is the divisor. When we write out our short division method, we swap the numbers around. So the divisor is outside of the division bar and the dividend is inside. It's very important that you remember this. Unlike some of the other calculations that you'll be familiar with, we start our short divisions on the left hand side, in this case in the tens column. We start on the left and work left to right. We look at our divisor and see how many times it goes into our tens of our dividend. In this case, how many times does three go into nine? Three goes into nine three times exactly. And we write that above. Because it goes in exactly three times, we can then move on to our units. Three goes into six two times exactly. And we can write that above. That gives us our answer, 32. We can check our answer by multiplying 32 by 3, which does give us 96. Moving on to the second example, the only difference here is that this is a three digit number. Once again, we must remember that our dividend goes inside our division bar and our divisor goes outside. So we're swapping our numbers around. Again, starting on the left hand side, four goes into four once exactly. Moving on to our tens, four goes into eight twice exactly. Moving on to our units, four goes into eight again, two times exactly. And that gives us our answer, 122. Again, we can check by multiplying 122 by four, which gives us 488. Sometimes things get a little more complicated and we can see that in our next example. Once again, we're starting in exactly the same way. We're putting our dividend inside the division bar and our divisor outside of the division bar, swapping our numbers around. Once again, starting on the left hand side, in this case in the hundreds column, four goes into four, one time exactly. Moving on to our tens column, four goes into five, one time, but this time not exactly. It goes in one time with one remaining. That's one ten remaining. So we can regroup that one ten with our units. We move it over, put it with our units and our units now becomes 12. We can then carry on our calculation. Four goes into 12, three times exactly. That completes our answer. 113 and once again we can check by multiplying 113 by 4 which gives us 452. Carrying on in the same way looking at the next example we can see straight away here that 6 does not go into 5. 6 does not go into 5, therefore we need to put a 0 there. That means we have still got 500s remaining. 
So we need to regroup those 500s and put them with the 10, put them with the 10s. 500 and 5 tens becomes 55 tens. We can now move on with our calculation. 6 goes into 55 nine times. With one remaining, remember one ten remaining, so we can regroup that one ten with our units, and that gives us eighteen units. And we can carry on. Six goes into eighteen three times, and that completes our answer. Looking at the next example things get a little bit more challenging. Once again, starting in exactly the same way, putting our dividend inside our division bar, divisor outside, starting on the left hand side, seven goes into seven, one time exactly, seven goes into eight, one time, with a remainder of one. And we will regroup that remainder and put it with our units. Seven goes into 15 two times this time with a remainder of one. And we write that next to our answer. Remainder one. Looking at the next example, once again we're going to have a remainder, but this time we're going to turn the remainder into a decimal. We're going to start in exactly the same way as we have previously, swapping our numbers around, starting on the left hand side, 4 goes into 1, 0 times, with 1 remaining. So we regroup that one, put it with the tens. Four goes into 14, three times, with two remaining. We're going to regroup that two with the units, 25 units. Four goes into 25, six times. with one remaining. Now rather than write the remainder R1 as we did in the previous example, this time we're going to continue with decimals and in order to do this we need to put some zeros at the end of our dividend. You can do this because there is nothing in those spaces and just adding zeros and the decimal point is quite okay. As we had one remainder from the previous, we're going to move that along exactly as we would in the earlier examples. And now we're going to carry on our calculation. Four goes into 10, two times with two remaining. And four goes into 20, five times, exactly. So we don't need to add any more zeros. If we had continuing remainders, we can keep adding zeros until we're satisfied that we've got enough decimal places. In summary, it's very important that you remember how to set up your calculation. Remember, the dividend goes inside, that's the number you are dividing by, and the divisor goes outside your division bar. That means you're swapping the numbers around in order from how it's traditionally written down. Unlike the other calculations that you're used to doing, 
it's time you start on the left hand side and work left to right. If you are using decimals, please don't forget to put your decimal points in. Very important. Good luck with your short division and we'll see you next time.